Hey, this is an old video from 2016, January 2016, that I published on YouTube uh, without commentary, uh, without graphics, without music, without anything. And that's what I was doing back then. Before this, I was publishing a lot of uh, eight ball videos, but I was using these for my own benefit. And I was putting them on YouTube just to kind of get them off my computer. I was using them to analyze my game. You know, a day or two after playing, I'd go back over and make sure I was getting the basics right, trying to figure out how I could have done things better, how, you know, my position play could have been more, you know, more useful if I did it this way, whatever. And and just just using them as private use, and then I was like, let's get them off my computer and stick them on YouTube. So that's what I did. And um, I don't know. After a year or two, they just start collecting dust, and nobody watches them. So I was going back some uh, over some of my YouTube archives uh, a couple of nights ago. I was like, you know, it's a shame. There's a lot to learn from these videos because. I, I was doing a lot of things wrong, and I had some basics wrong. And you'll see what I mean as we go through this video. Uh, before this, it was all about eight ball. It was just a whole lot of eight ball videos. And again, it was just the camera rolling and doing it. And then I switched to nine ball. And this was the first nine ball video, or first video of me playing nine ball that I published on YouTube. And then I just kind of stuck with nine ball, and this is running on number two and three and four and five. And just wound up with all these videos of no, no commentary, no graphics, no nothing, no, no explanation of anything, just me running it. But anyway, um, I downloaded one last night. This is the first one, and uh, we're going to go through it. Uh, Believe it or not, this this situation in this table is a lot like my last video, the one titled "It's All About the Two Ball." Um, and you'll see how vital the two ball always is in in a rack of nine ball. And I'll explain that further as we go. It was a good break. Uh, both the cue ball and the one ball are up table on the breaking side of the table, and. Uh, the four ball, which was probably one of these two corner balls, went into one of these two corner pockets. So everything's set up for a pretty basic, pretty simple run out. Um, but you'll see how we kind of goof that right from the start and on getting on the two ball. Now look where the three is. Take note of that. So we have to get in a position on the two ball to, to, to get at least decent position on that three ball and the last thing we won is what I did we got on the wrong side of the two ball so the cue ball is going up this side of the table toward this corner of the table and the three balls all the way over here and you got the five ball blocking it so what I got down attempting to do on this ball was to go to the, the, the bottom round and use a little bit of left hand English um, to hit this round, bounce back up in, into somewhere around this area here for the three ball, which would have made the rest of it. That would have been back in line and everything would have been great. Um, a couple things went wrong here. And let's just proceed through it. Number one, I'm not on the middle of the table. I'm actually going to this side of the eight ball. And I was trying to shoot for this side, just spin it out a little without getting hooked behind the seven ball. And we wound up hitting the eight ball on the right hand side of it, which could have been a disaster. But believe it or not, I know it's hard to tell on by this angle of this camera angle on this table, but I can still make that three. I can just barely see enough of it to make it, and uh, to just draw out. 
for somewhere around center table for the five. I think I wind up shooting the five down in this corner because I get behind it here. So, well, this is not an easy shot. You have to hit the rail and the ball at the same time. Um, I put a good stroke on this and stayed down. So I'm, just, I'm shooting my way back into shape, and it, uh, it's all coming down to that shot right there. So that's pretty much as good as you can hope for. But now you can see a big mistake coming up right here on this five ball. Uh, pay attention first to my shoulder right here. And you're going to see it drop. And when my hand comes in, my right hand comes into the picture, you'll also see that wind up below where the cue stick is when I get down on the table. You want to stay parallel with the table, and this stick should wind up at the same height off the table after the shot, but you can see it winds up down here. So let's go through it twice and, and pay attention to my right hand, and you'll see it go lower as we stroke through. You see how it dropped right there? That was because my shoulder dropped. Now, let's focus in on the tip of the cue. And do it again, and watch where the tip of the, the tip of the cue should wind up. Actually, a hair bit lower because we you're always going to be jacked up just a little bit. You want to stay as parallel as you can, but you almost can't help being jacked up a little bit. So the cue should wind up after the shot. The cue should wind up a hair bit lower than where the tip is now, and watch where it winds up. You see how it's floating up in the air. And I think what happened here is I, is I lined up for a center ball shot, and at the very last split second, I decided to put a, bit, a little bit of top on this ball because I have to roll down to this position here on the six ball. If I get too sharp of an angle, we're going to come in behind. It's going to hit the nine ball. It's going to come in behind it, and it could wind up blocking the seven ball. So we're just forcing a little bit of top on it just to get the right angle. So I'm, I'm still going to nick the nine, but I'm going to nick this side of the nine instead of getting directly behind it. And that should actually keep the cue ball up toward this position. It's going to keep it from going down table. If the nine wasn't there at all, the cue ball will wind up in a horrible position right here for the seven, and we're either going to have to play safe or shoot a bank shot. Yeah. So, I think at the last split, and it was over three years ago, it's hard to actually remember this game. Uh, in fact, it's impossible. But I'm pretty sure that I just, right at the last split second, I said, you know what, I need a little bit of top. I need to get that ball down the table a little bit. So, there's a result. This is a six ball. I know it's hard to tell with these colors because this looks black. It's actually dark green. And just barely nicked the nine. And you can see how it kept it up table and kept it from going down table. So, the last split second plan worked on this. And this is just a stop shot. Um, which should give me perfect position on the eight. But you can see we actually... We make the stop shot, we make the A, but uh, for some reason, um, I put a little bit of right hand English on here, and, and I think back then this was just a habit. This eight ball is frozen to the rail, and I always learned on this particular shot to put just a hair of right hand English on it, and to hit the rail and the ball at the same time, and that'll force the eight ball in and hug it against the rail. Um, but the result of the cue ball is, it, it, well, number one, I almost scratch, and number two, I come toward too close to this rail. I'd ra much rather be out in the center of the table for this nine ball shot, and I'll explain why in a minute. So, yeah, I put some right hand English on this just to make the eight ball, but I wasn't really thinking about where the cue ball is going. And this is a sharper angle than it looks like. Um, this is a bit of a cut here to make this nine ball on the side. And the problem with that is if I shoot it 
dead center, it's a scratch shot. And if I shoot it real hard and put top on it, it's a two rail scratch shot. Um, if I put a lot of bottom on it and, and shoot it hard, it's a scratch shot in the side. <laughs> so uh, all the way around, it's a scratch shot if you do it wrong. So I'm forced to do it right. And just put a little bit of draw on this ball and cut it uh, just to keep it out of that corner pocket and, and use this route as a stopper. So if you watch carefully, you'll probably see this bend out of the path of the corner pocket right there. <laughs> 